Even though most of the Academia's restrictions have significantly relaxed, I'm still a bit worried that the Matra might give her trouble. I need to stay here to keep an eye on the situation. Kale, can you head to Sumeru City and find out why she isn't here yet? Um, does it have to be me? I'd only assign a job this important to someone I trust. Are you not feeling well? Covered. It's just that if I'm going to see her, um, I think I need to mentally prepare myself first. <sighs> I know, I know. You'll have a tough time if you go by yourself. If we could arrange for someone to accompany you. Oh, hey there! It's been a while. What a coincidence. I was just thinking about asking you to accompany Kale to Sumeru City. Sorry, that's not what I meant. It's just that this matter concerns research banned by the Academia. Not the sort of thing you'd shout from the rooftops. Also, you happen to know about this situation. There are very few people I can trust to be discreet right now. After giving it much thought, I believe you're the most suitable person for this task. It's complicated, and this isn't the best place to talk about it. We'll fill you in on the details once she arrives. You might have heard about her in Sumeru before. Her name is Farazan, and she's a very experienced senior researcher. Let's just say that a huge part of Kasharawar's mechanical research over the past 100 years has used her academic discourse and manuscripts as their foundation. She is. But she vanished for a hundred years because of a certain incident. She only returned to the Academia after being found in the wilderness a few years ago. Because of that, her current personality can be a bit... Uh... Strange. As is her attitude towards Kale. Mm, I'm getting a headache just thinking about it. She doesn't have bad intentions, so you don't have to be scared. Try. Yes. Kasharawar and Spontamod researchers are often quite prejudiced, so I can't trust them with this matter. However, Farazan isn't influenced by modern thinking. In our previous correspondence through letters, she indicated that she'd be willing to help. It's already past our arranged meeting time, but she still hasn't shown up. I don't think so. With her personality, it's more likely that she got wrapped up in some sort of trouble. Anyway, can you go with Kale to the Academia and check on Farazan for me? Uh, thank goodness. I was so anxious. I'm counting on you two. Uh, Kale, don't push yourself too hard. Just go there and see what's going on. Our task is important, but not that urgent. If Farazan really is in some trouble, come back and tell me about it. We can always reschedule our meeting. After all, if she's distracted by other things, it'll affect her ability to help us. All right, let's go! Sorry, what did you say? Oh, could you repeat yourself? As you know, I'm sure. Hearing goes with age. Farzan, I said that you need to give us an answer. Ah, yes. And did you forget to add madam when you addressed me earlier? Your hearing is perfectly fine. <clears throat> madam, Farzan. We don't want to make things difficult for you. However, you haven't been teaching courses or supervising theses these past few years. Isn't this rather problematic as an advisor? Never mind the students, even other advisors are starting to complain. And who, if I may ask, complain? If they have any issue with me, tell them to talk to me themselves rather than waste any of your time. Um... <laughs> you don't have to tell me anything. 
I very well know that it's those people from Haravatot. How I wish they'd put their time into doing proper research instead. But, Madam Farazon, it has been a long while since you last made any practical academic contribution yourself. Uh, ahem. Academic contribution cannot simply be divided between the tangible and the intangible. The issue here, I believe, is that the, the reviewer doesn't understand the very nature of knowledge itself. In any case, it makes no sense to use a metric like this to evaluate a mentor. Which sage set this rule anyway? I should write a letter of complaint right this instant! W wait Madame Farazon, please let me finish! That's her, all right. But the person with her doesn't look like a matra. Shh! She hates it when people call her young! Her body apparently stopped aging during the year she was gone. So that's why she looks the same as she did a hundred years ago. <sighs> okay, I think I'm ready for this. Let's go! Anyway, Akara Crafts and the leader of Kasharawar would like to invite you to collaborate on this project. They're wondering if you'd be interested. Uh, Madam Farazan? Are you listening? Mm-hmm. Ah, Kale! Why are you here at the Academia? Are you feeling better now? I'm m much better, Madam Farazan. <laughs> it's all thanks to the Traveler and the Dendro Archon. Have you been sleeping well? You seem to be developing some eye bags. Is that brat Tainari forcing you to stay up late again? No, it's because I'm a slow learner. It's not Master's fault. It's good to be hardworking, but you need to take care of your health. I'll have to give Tainari a right talking to when I see him. I'll also prepare some health supplements for you. Uh, there's really no need. Ah! And is the person beside you the legendary traveler? Oh, I've heard much about you before. In fact, I've been meaning to meet you for a while now. It is thanks to you, after all, that the Academia is finally getting back on its feet. Even Kali's illness is... Ahem. <clears throat> Madam Farzan, I believe we were still discussing the collaboration with Akara Crafts. I'd wager it's those Kasharwar Dunderheads finding excuses so that I'd go to their Darshan. Say no more. I have no plans to change my field of research. <sighs> if you're this unwilling to participate in the collaborative project, you can also consider teaching a class. It might be difficult to teach a course with topics that only fall within Haravatat's subjects, but we can't delay this anymore. You need to give an answer. You can teach a course or participate in a collaborative project. If you don't do either, it'll be hard for me to persuade the advisors and students who have been complaining. Could you not give me a few more days to consider? This matter has been delayed for so long already. That's precisely the issue. If you don't give an answer today, I fear that someone will soon escalate their complaints to the sages. What a waste of free time these folks are. Now you two are here at Tainari's behest, I take it. I'm sorry, but given the current situation, it looks like I'll have to come over some other day. Um... Of course. I shall need some time to think as well. What now? She seems so busy. Master said there's no rush, but I know that he's been busy working on something at Pardis DI, so he hasn't returned to Gandharvaville for several days now. I feel for Madame Farazan, but I still want to ask her to come with us. But if I get her in trouble with the Academia, then she won't have the time to help Master! What should I do? Oh, this is such a headache. Yeah, that would be the best for them both. I'll check with Master later and see if there's anything I can help him with. But I'm sure he'll say... The best thing you can do now is study hard, so I don't have to give you remedial lessons. Huh? Oh yes! This way she can get her problem sorted out quickly, and then she can go see Master. So if I also stay and help... Uh, <laughs> that still sounds kind of scary. Okay then, I'm counting on you. I have to teach students from Haravatat or owe Kasharawar a favor. 
It strikes me that they might be even less happy about such a deal than I am. <laughs> I think I can sympathize with them. We're back, Madame Farazan. The Traveler said that she can stay and help you. Oh! Why, I couldn't ask for more. In fact, I'm rather curious about the type of person the Traveler is. You were the one who taught Azara a lesson after all. That said, will I be troubling you? Is that so? Good. It does so happen that I do have something I need help with. Now, should I apply to teach a course with Haravatat, or join the collaborative project that Kasharawar is proposing? <sighs> Honestly, I don't want to choose either of them. I don't know if Tainari's told you about this before, but while my research involves learning about ruins and the mechanisms within them, I don't belong to Kasharawar, which specializes in researching mechanisms, nor am I in Spontamod, which specializes in researching energy flow. Instead, I'm part of Haravatat, which specializes in languages and scripts. She has been invited to Kasharawar multiple times to continue her research, but she's rejected them each time. Just listen to how they introduce themselves. In the future, Kasharawar will be the only Darshan with the ability to research mechanisms. <laughs> There's no such thing as exclusivity in knowledge. Besides, the current Kasharawar is more concerned about how mechanisms can be used in everyday life, while my research involves textual analysis of ruins. If they're trying to use the collaborative project as an excuse to have me reconsider again... Uh, no, that's not it. The request this time is from Makara Crafts. The representative of Kasharawar recommended you to them, Madame Farazan. In truth, she told me that it's because she respects you a lot. Oh! Respect? Oh, my. <clears throat> Putting aside my ideological differences with Kasharawar, I suppose I must acknowledge this attitude of theirs. At the very least, they're bounds above those decrepit Haravatat fools. Yeah, Akara Crafts is a pretty nice shop. Hmm. Since both of you feel as such, I shall first hear this proposal. In summary, Akara Crafts wants to design a series of early learning toys that will cultivate curiosity and learning in children. Hmm. Early learning toys. Interesting. The Academia agreed to work with them because they hope that these toys can help children become excellent researchers in the future. True. The current Academia is in need of some new blood. If the children start learning now, perhaps I can find some talented students in a few years. Madame Farazan, you still haven't found any students? Anise, Kasharawar's representative, should be staying in the inn at Port Ormos. If you want more details, you can find her there. Port Ormos? Now there's a place I haven't been to in a long time. I wonder how much it's changed. I probably can't join you since Port Ormos is a little far from here. I, I should probably go back and report to Master, and then review today's homework. No worries. Go do your homework, Kale. Once I'm done with everything here, I'll head over to Pardistii. Thank you. Why, I'd even call this a rare chance for a curious researcher like myself to observe the legendary traveler up close. Oh, it's really you. Did you change your mind? All right, calm down. Let me be clear. I'm still not all that interested in Kasharawar. I'm just here to see how the project is going. After all, you are here as representatives of the Academia in this collaboration. The reputation of all research is at stake here, so I will not simply stand by should mistakes get made. <laughs> Either way, it's good that you were willing to come. Now, we've given Akara Crafts many ideas over the past couple of days. However, their owner thinks that our designs are too complicated, which will drive production costs too far up. That's expected. Students who have never had to deal with budgetary constraints probably don't understand how important it is to keep costs low. How enviable. Oh, uh, 
If you join the Kasharawar, your budget will be as big as you want it to be. I guarantee it. That's enough. I will not repeat myself. Take me to a car crafts owner first, if you please. <sighs> All right. He's usually at the slope up ahead recruiting volunteers to test out his toys. Let's just head over. Mamdu, the one I recommended is here. Oh, uh, so you're, uh, Madame Farazan? Yes, that's me. Ah, oh, wonderful. We haven't been able to make any progress on our collaboration recently. We've made many suggestions, but Miss Anis thought that those ideas were too simple and wouldn't be effective in training the mind. These early learning toys are meant to help the academia train future researchers, after all. If they're too simple, then how are they any different from regular toys? But if they're too complicated, not only will they be expensive to produce considering our production capabilities, but they won't have much broad appeal to Sumeru's children, either. So the design can't be too complicated, but it can't be too easy to play with, either. Hmm... I remember that in your notes. Many contraptions have managed to fulfill complex functions despite using simple parts. Maybe we can do something similar with these early learning toys. The contraptions in my notes? I didn't create those. I simply took the contraptions and the ruins apart and analyzed them. But now that you mention it, the ruins did have things like that. Do you have a pen, paper, and scissors? I'll make a paper prototype. You have an idea already? I suppose I should have expected as much of a respected academia senior researcher. We do have those. Yes, please, help yourself. Oh, you're done already? Let me explain. These three thick lines represent three poles. These paper strips of varying lengths represent rings of different sizes. They can be slotted onto the poles and stacked up like a tower. Well, that is easier to make than I expected. So, how is this game played? That's very simple as well. You just need to shift the tower from this pole to another pole. Um, isn't this a little too simple? Uh, even by the standards of an early learning toy, I mean. Of course, when moving each ring, the paper strips in this case, you must follow one rule. You can only move one ring at a time, and you can't place a bigger ring on top of a smaller one. It's like building a tower. The rings in the three poles must be stacked from big to small. I named this toy Pagoda Stack. Hmm, Pagoda Stack. That sounds way too simple. Even I feel like it's missing something. Give it a try and you'll find out if it's simple or not. I heard from Anise that you find volunteers to try out the toys, right? Why don't we do the same for this game? It's such a simple toy. Uh, there's no need to... Mamdu, let's just do as she says. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, then. And that's how you play this game. You can all give it a try. Let's see who's able to move the tower to another pole in the smallest number of steps. You called everyone here for such a simple toy? It doesn't look like it'll take that many steps. Come on, we all promised to help Mr. Mamdu test out the new toys. He said he'd give us new Genius Invocation TCG cards. Ugh, fine. Let's get this over and done with so we can head back and play cards. Done! It took me 19 steps. Huh? It took me over 20 steps. <laughs> I only needed 18 steps. Not bad. Looks like you're all familiar with the rules now. Then let's increase the difficulty. The next tower will be five layers tall. Now then, give it a shot. Wait, there's more? Well, since we're already here, why don't we just give it a try? 
An extra layer shouldn't make it that much harder, right? What's going on? I've already moved over 30 steps, but I'm still not done yet. <laughs> I'm almost done. Looks like I'm the faster one this time. Done! It took me 35 steps. What? How? This pagoda stack toy is pretty fun to play with. Good. We'll try it one final time. This time, we'll add two more layers, making seven layers in total. Mamdu, we've still got quite a few paper strips here. Why don't you give this a go as well? Do you need that many steps for something this simple? Let me try. Madam Faruzan, allow me to try it as well. You are looking at it quite seriously just now. Are you starting to understand the principles involved? I... think so. If you want to test out your hypothesis, you'll just have to play and find out. Got it. Ah, We don't have enough paper strips left for you, Traveler. However, by the looks of things, you seem to have the game figured out. Why don't you guess what the lowest number of steps needed to solve a seven-layer pagoda stack is? Oh, color me impressed. You figured it out so quickly. Let's see how well they do then. If I move this small ring, then the big one won't be able to go on top of it. Well, this is going to take more steps than I expected. I... I've lost count of how many steps I've taken. Can I restart? This got a lot harder. Hmm... <gasps> I solved it! Madam Faruzan, it takes 127 steps in total. That many? But there are only seven layers! For every extra layer in the Pagoda stack, the move order you need to consider becomes much more complex, and the number of steps required will at least double. More accurately, it will require double the steps, plus one each time. You did well. You didn't underestimate the principles behind it just because it's an early learning toy. The complexity of any given contraption isn't determined by the number of parts it has. The way the parts interact and the rules behind how it operates are important, too. Oh, I see. No wonder you emphasized in your notes that no contraption should ever be underestimated. I see. So even a simple toy can become complex with the right set of rules. That's right. The rules used for Bogota Stack are the simplest kind when it comes to ancient contraption-making techniques. I could spend some time picking out all those machines that do something similar and write you a reference book. Once that happens, you can give the volunteers the reference book and paper prototypes and find out which toy is the most popular. Do you have any other toys? Yeah! When can we play with them? Uh, in about two days or so, I think. Anise, if you're free, can you help me with the illustrations for the reference book? Of course! I'd be honored! Two days should be enough for us to find more volunteers. Then we can organize a huge conference here, at which we can announce which toy we'll be making. You'd be most welcome. We need more people to get a healthy range of opinions. The more, the merrier. Thank you for coming here with me today. I'll walk back with you. <laughs> I'll be going then. Say hi to Tainari and Kale for me if you can. Once everything here is settled, I'll make my way over to Pardis Di as quickly as I can. Anise? We haven't had much time to get to know each other, but she seems like a good kid. She's able to calmly figure out the basic principles behind something without being influenced by others. I'll do my best to teach her over the next few days. Still, how much she learns will really depend on her. Well, her interest lies in the application of mechanisms. I do have some old knowledge to share, but if we think about the future, it's easier for her to learn the things she's interested in if she stays in Kasharawar. 
My research into mechanisms is, in a sense, a side effect of my research into ancient texts. If she becomes my student to learn how to make modern contraptions, it wouldn't benefit either of us in the long run. However, if she develops an interest in deciphering ancient texts over these next two days, that would change things. If I successfully poach a student, those young punks at Haravatot will have one less reason to cut my budget. Perhaps if this collaborative project goes smoothly, I can even ignore Haravatot and ask for a higher budget directly from the Academia. Oh, I could come up with lots of ideas. With Anissa's help, two days will be enough for our work. However, I'm still undecided as to the style of the reference book's text and illustrations. You're right. If no one understands the reference book, it doesn't matter how detailed it is. It's better to make it simpler and fun so that children will be interested in the subject. It'll also make it easier for me to recruit students in the long run. Thank you. I'll take your opinion into account. See you in two days. You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? <laughs> all right then, I'll teach you. Oh yes, I'll teach you all right. Mark my word. Oh, you're here. We're just starting to set up the venue. We've called up everyone we possibly could have. This is going to be quite the event. <laughs> my masterpiece is going to be exhibited after all. Let's see what the Academia shall say about it this time. And if we activate this little mechanism just like that, a Sumeru rose will appear at the top of the cane. <gasps> oh, I see. I thought it came out of thin air. It's amazing. If the mechanism was bigger, you could make a rabbit appear, right? Then you can't use a cane. Could you switch it out with a hat or something? You're applying what you learned creatively. Not bad. Let's look at the next page. If you fold an origami bird like this, it'll fly further and more stably. Whoa. You can make a mechanism using just a piece of paper? <laughs> the principles at play are even more important than the parts that make up a mechanism. These are pretty cool. I'm tempted to try them out. I'm not that interested in toys, but if they'll be beneficial for children's development... Everyone! We have paper prototypes and craft materials that you can use to make your own toys. Come try them out! This is such a well-prepared event. <laughs> I'll give it a go. But we want to play too! It's fine. We have a lot of paper prototypes and craft materials. All feedback is also welcomed. My origami bird flew further this time! Uh, Professor Farazan, how can I make mine fly farther? Ahem. <clears throat> Just madam will do. Maybe in the future, you may indeed get the chance to call me Professor. You may wish to pay attention to these few details. Here, for example. All right, try it again. Wow, it really did fly farther! Madam Farazan, will we learn origami at the Academia? Of course you will. If you become a researcher, you can explore any field you like to your heart's content. In the future, if you want, you can even become one of my students. But Mom and Dad said that there are six Darshans in the Academia. Wait, was it seven? Which Darshan teaches about mechanisms in origami? Well, uh, in this case, it wouldn't be Haravatat. I know. We need to choose Kisharawar. 
Huh? I want to attend Kashara War in the future and fold even better origami birds. Uh, I want to make even more awesome mechanisms! Actually, the other Darshans do have their own specialties, too. For example, Haravatat specializes in... Pay attention, children! Ch children How did this happen? What if we end up in a Darshan we don't like? Does that mean that we won't get to learn about the things we do like? Hmm... <sighs> no, that won't happen. Take me, for example. I'm a researcher from Haravatat, but I research mechanisms. See? The only person able to restrict your curiosity as a researcher is you. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, not really. Huh. It's all right. You still have a long road ahead of you. Now, do you want to learn about some other machines? Let me tell you a story about pressure-based mechanisms and elemental monuments. <laughs> <laughs>